which is back in. But I want to show, uh, I think I'll make a third movie, which is a bonus movie on how do we actually uh, create an OSGI plugin. All right. Uh, so you may have functionality in Adempier before, a legacy uh, module. And I'm going to show you how you're going to create and put it in the OSGI plugin and let it run in Adempier. Well, I'm going to do things uh, here more in um, completely in Eclipse. Here's the uh, development environment, and you have all the Idempia plugins here. Uh, in order to create a new plugin, it's simple. Just new and choose a plugin project, right? And, and you can give it uh, any name. Um, uh, you can say uh, migrated um, module. And you will create this in this folder, and uh, you can put this as in OGI framework, and then you proceed, and then you do not need to have an activator here because you will choose one from already made in demand as finish. Well, I'm going to kill that because I have already created one. Uh, it is here, uh, point of sales uh, integration, and I'm going to uh, call up the manifest file. Here's the manifest file. Now what do you do in the manifest file is that you have to add in your required plugins and you must have these two, Adempia Base Core and Adempia Plugins Util because this plugin utils um, is where you can call up the activator. Uh, let me browse this activator. Uh, this activator is where you want to do your um, two-pack Plugin. You can see here it's hard coded to receive a two pack zip. In our earlier movie, we already have the um, um, pack out uh, called post integration. We will rename it here and put it here. Uh, let me get back to the um, manifest file and look at the dependency. And because my post integration used a Apache ActiveMQ transport storm protocol, I need not include the jar file here. I will add it to the, from the target platform and um, you can also um, define more class path that you may need if you were to put a jar file in here so I'm going to do it so now I have all my manifest file and you have to uh, put this into register body so that it act alongside the base call and you um, sort of also export out yes you have to export uh, these two these two packages which is uh, where your code is I forgot to tell you about your code so basically you put all your code your legacy code your compare your code um, here and that's all you need to do so they are all bundled up as a its own uh, plugin uh, but you have to export it out before the base could use it because the base will be calling out the um, class path of this and you should use the same same uh, name so that it is bump this you will not pose a class path problem because now it is acting as a buddy it's registered as a buddy now you can read up more from google but basically this will give you an idea how a module can completely uh, rest individually and when you're running it, you could uh, then define uh, define your uh, that your plugin uh, exists in it. So I will do that in the third segment on how I really import back the packing. So I'll just end this movie here, which is uh, here's where you have everything. You put it at default. Well, um, well. Maybe I'll just go ahead and run it. How about that? I'll make this in the two movies. Yeah, sorry about the confusion between three or two movies. So let me look for my um, pack out uh, post integration I did earlier. Should be somewhere here. Uh, here it is. So I'll copy that and uh, come to my Eclipse environment. Let me close that first. And, uh, Place it under uh, Metaf manifest, and I have to rename it 
to two pack. So I'll refactor that, choose rename, and put a two pack zip. There you are. So then it should work. Uh, but let me do that in a uh, third segment because something may go wrong and I'll fall up this movie. Okay then, so this is our second segment uh, pack in to import back the artifacts. Oh, sorry, I was doing bonus and I'm doing here bonus to show you how you actually create a plugin in IDMP. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the third segment.